Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Lovely News Network, bringing you the latest news on these YouTube streets, honey. So I hope everybody's doing good this evening. Y'all know I have been gone. I've been busy, busy, busy editing the Astro World documentary part two. So thank you about who's watched it in the past 24 hours. And thank you guys for the feedback. It feels good to just get back to regular news and not, you know, think so much about the whole Astro World tragedy. But um, so if y'all do not know, because a lot of people want my opinion on this and I haven't gotten a chance to talk about it. YouTube is planning on hiding the dislike button. OK, and a lot of folks were asking, well, how do you feel about this? Because sometimes when you upload your videos within literally the video can be a 20 minute video within one minute, there's a dislike. And I'm like, child, let them have fun. It's still engagement. We still get the c c coins. You know what I'm saying? The fact that you brought your energy to my shit to hit dislike, it tickles me because I'm not going to waste my energy running. Honey, did they be the first in line? Okay, before the regular subscribers, it's the haters. You know, so it just shows like, you know what I mean? Like I have you wasting your energy and your time running to dislike something that you don't have to watch. So for me, I find this shit funny. So I'm kind of hurt. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of low key hurt. I want to upload a video, know that my haters are also being entertained like my fans, okay? So yeah, I kind of feel away. Don't you know? Don't don't suppress the hate, bitch. At the end of the day, I'm okay with it because I already know that my like is gonna be way higher than my dislikes. So we're not worried about the 200 haters when the video has like seven to 10,000 likes. You know what I'm saying? But you guys know I'm a proponent of free speech. I'm a proponent of people being able to, you know, to have their opinions on stuff, regardless if you like it or don't like it. I think we all have the right to... I think we all have the right to express how we feel about anything, okay? I don't think that we should suppress people. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me. I focus on the people who want to enjoy this damn cup of tea with me, okay? Fuck the people who don't get me. I love the folks who rock with me. So why shouldn't people who don't rock with me, why shouldn't they get a say to dislike something if they want to dislike it? That's their energy, and that's their business. I'm in their head rent-free. So I just find it very funny that YouTube is doing this, but their excuse for doing it is so weak. Oh, we're thinking of the new creators. Oh, when people decide to start uploading videos, it takes a toll on their mental health and self-esteem to have more dislikes than they have likes. Oh, well, the average new creator, if they're even lucky to break a thousand views, you know what I'm saying? Let's say you're a new creator, you get a thousand views and maybe you get 20 likes and 25 dislikes. That's what's going to let you know what your viewers like and don't like. You know what I'm saying? That's like a quick, you know, kick in the pants, per se, to let you know, like, okay, well, they didn't like this content or they weren't filling this video, but this other video has way more likes, so maybe I can gear more towards that type of conversation or make those type of videos. So I always took the like and dislike as a way to just kind of navigate, you know, what videos people enjoy or what part of the video they didn't like. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the clip of what YouTube had to say about the whole dislike situation. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Hey folks, you may have seen a while back that YouTube announced it was experimenting with making dislike counts private to only the creator of the video. Now, if you're like me, you were surprised by that. I mean, I've always thought seeing the number of dislikes on a video helps us know as viewers if it's a good video or not, if it's a helpful tutorial or not, or if what a creator is, is saying in their video is generally agreed with or not. But unfortunately, research teams at YouTube have found there's this whole other use for disliking a video that I had never experienced as a creator and you may not have either. Apparently, groups of viewers are targeting a video's dislike button to drive up the count, turning it into something like a, a, a game with a visible scoreboard. And it's usually just because they don't like the creator or what they stand for. That's a big problem when half of YouTube's mission is to give everyone a voice. So earlier in 2021, YouTube experimented with making the public dislike count private to see if it would help reduce these coordinated dislike attacks across the platform. And after analysis, they did see a reduction. So the update from YouTube is that the dislike button is staying, but the dislike counts will now be private. You can still dislike videos and that action will be used to tune your own recommendations, but you won't be able to see the dislike count. 
All right, so you guys just watched that clip. And like I said, I'm not buying it. Um, I feel like this is very self-serving. This has nothing to do with the little people. It has nothing to do with the older YouTubers who've been here for a while like me and our self-esteem and our mental health. Can dislikes fuck with you? You know, occasionally, yes. If you have way more dislikes than likes, I can see where that might, you know, mess with you. But again, that is the real world. Everybody's not going to like everything that you put out there. I mean, if that's the case, if we start removing dislikes from YouTube, what's next? So if I don't like a movie, I don't have the right to give it one star as opposed to five star. If I read a book on Amazon and I'm not feeling it, I don't have the right to rate it. You know, I just think that that's a really slippery slope. This reminds me of that whole attitude that took place all through the, you know, late 2000s. This whole everyone gets a trophy mentality. No, everybody does not get a trophy. Sometimes your kid just sucks at sports. He should not get a trophy for not doing anything. We want winners on this team. If your team is losing by like 20 points, uh, no, you do not get a trophy. I'm sorry. That's how I was raised. But, you know, with this generation, it's like, oh, everybody wins. Oh, good try. It doesn't matter how hard you try or how hard you don't try. You still win. You still pass. That does not teach you consequences. That doesn't teach you how to rectify or change behavior. That's just pacifying and putting a Band-Aid on it. We just live right now the generation of kids that are coming through. Everybody gets a damn trophy. Okay? You finish last, you come home with, with, with a trophy. You kidding me? I mean, what's that teaching kids? It's okay to lose. And unfortunately, it's our society. It, it's what we're building for. And it's not just in basketball, it's in life. You know, everybody thinks they should get a job. Everybody thinks they should get a good job. No, that's not the way it works. But unfortunately, that's what we are preparing for. Because... You finish fifth, you, you walk home with this nice trophy, parents are all excited. No. I mean, I, not to be too blunt, but you're a loser. Like, we're losers. We got beat. So you lost. There is no trophy for us. But unfortunately, the way everybody, the way these kids are brought up today, there is a trophy. Because nobody wants anybody to have hard feelings. Nobody wants to get their feelings hurt. Well, unfortunately, in the real world, I'm not sure how it is with, with, with your all's jobs. But with mine, if you lose enough, you get fired. And that's just the way it is. And I, I'm trying to explain to our kids, like, hey, I'm trying to prepare you for the real world. Because when you go to get a job, there's competition. And what are you going to do to stand out? But unfortunately, we're not preparing these kids, before they get to us at least, to be ready for that. So I'm definitely not feeling that. Now, another thing that I find very, very funny that, you know, the, all of a sudden the dislike button is oh, causing all this angst. I find it very interesting that all of this is coming to be a conversation now that YouTube themselves are being disliked. <laughs> if y'all do not know, when you go on to a lot of videos on the YouTube page, let's say they're trying to explain the next big change or YouTube rewind. Okay. They are hit with a shit ton of dislikes. All of their videos usually have more dislikes than likes. And I think it's really bothering YouTube themselves because they're the ones who supposedly run and own the platform. And their channel is always being hit with a shit ton of dislikes. And let's not forget the whole YouTube Rewind, you know, fiasco. And the thing that bothers me is instead of them taking that criticism and saying, well, damn, why are all these people upset at YouTube Rewind? What did we do wrong? Instead of taking that and understanding the reason why people were upset with the whole YouTube Rewind situation is because it was the regular people. OK, on this platform who made this platform what it is. So when you're sitting here giving rewards and shout outs and, you know, deeming these celebrities great and giving them all these accolades with the people who actually built your site. They don't even get invited to these shows. They don't get rewards and things like that. Yes, people are going to fill away. It was not celebrities and it was not mainstream media that built YouTube. It was regular everyday people who made this site what it is. And somehow along the way, YouTube has forgotten that. And it has frustrated a lot of creators, including myself. And I think that's like the biggest slap in the face that you would sit here and reward people who just got here. You just got here. 
But the folks who've been here for years putting in work, it's like, eh, whatever. You're not mainstream, so we're not focusing on you guys anymore. And that is why for the past two years, they have received a shit ton of dislikes on their YouTube Rewind videos because they're no longer about people. It's no longer about you on YouTube. It's about big names and brands and things like that. And I think that's really crazy. So it's not about them being offended and their mental health this is about censorship that's what it boils down to and another thing i very much noticed is that this political storm on the internet is causing a huge divide i've been saying that for a long time and i also believe another reason why they're trying to implement this is because if you go on any political channel especially concerning the white house anything with joe biden anything with dr ouchie fauci okay mr ouchie fauci Anything concerning him also gets a shit ton of dislikes. And I think it's starting to bother the mainstream media. It's starting to bother, you know, the White House and stuff like that. Because they feel like once they put out a new, you know, video, they want the positive press. They want it neutralized. So I find that very interesting. And DW covered this. I want you guys to check this out really quick. I think it shows that they don't actually understand how people think. YouTube Rewind number four, most disliked video of all time from 2019. And the Baby Shark Dance is the fifth most disliked video of all time. That one has to be from parents that have to hear that song nonstop and they're just clicking dislike. More recently, some of the most disliked videos that we've seen on YouTube have been political. We've seen this from a lot of Joe Biden's press conferences and Joe Biden's speeches and White House live streams, anything with Kamala Harris. <laughs> The second that they go live on YouTube, they're instantly inundated with tens of thousands of dislikes in many cases. We saw the exact same thing for a documentary trailer about the honorable, venerable, majestic leader, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Now, when this trailer dropped, it was instantly overwhelmed with dislikes. One of the highest ratios of dislike to like that anyone has seen in recent years. A couple specific examples of some of the videos that probably got YouTube's attention. The COVID Town Hall, this is the most viewed video on the White House YouTube channel, has 68,000 downvotes and just 10,000 upvotes. The inauguration had 110,000 downvotes, just 17,000 upvotes. Olivia Rodrigo and Anthony Fauci read fan tweets. 59,000 downvotes, 11,000 upvotes. Every single press conference with Jen Psaki has more downvotes than upvotes. It's also worth pointing out that the White House YouTube account has already done their part to maybe suppress the will of the people and the voice of the people because they removed the ability for users to comment on their videos. Now, I have a feeling that if the Trump administration had removed the ability of people to comment on YouTube videos, we would be subjected to thousands of articles from the media about how this was a suppression of free speech. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So for me, I definitely think the rabbit hole goes deep with this one. It has nothing to do with small creators. Let's keep it real. Nobody gives a shit about small creators on this platform especially this damn platform okay this is about the political aspect of youtube you know basically feeling embarrassed and shame because anytime they open their mouth and upload a video it's disliked and you know and the, and the craziest part is you can't even comment and let them know why you dislike the video because why the comments are off on a lot of these videos you'll notice if they have a shit ton of dislikes the comments are automatically off so to me this goes down the slippery slope of censorship and i think that's what's going to come next you know first the dislikes and then people will get used to it and say okay well whatever it's no big deal and then eventually it'll be the comments Eventually, they'll make it where they're just going to, oh, you can just come on YouTube and watch the video. No comments, you know, and can the comment section be toxic on YouTube and on social media in general? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I get tore up on my comments sometimes. I mean, it is what the fuck it is. That is the Internet. You know what I'm saying? There's not too much you can do about it. And some of those comments, like I've said before, are nothing more than damn bots and AI. Not all, but, you know, a good majority, you know, so. I feel like at the end of the day, you have to be able to take the good with the bad. You can't just take the praises. And then when it comes to the, the negativity, then it's, oh, no, I don't want to see or hear any of that. Well, that's life. <laughs> that's how life works. You're going to see a little bit of good. You're going to see a little bit of bad. But I think this is the road that they're trying to go down is to eventually make it where 
either their top YouTubers or their top channels, you will not be able to interact on them. They're tr they're basically trying to turn YouTube into television. And I've been saying this for years. When you think about it, when you watch a TV show or a movie, there's no comment section. You're just watching it and you're commenting either on Twitter or you're commenting with your family in your home, but there's no comment section. So that's going to be the next step. And you can tell because their whole rationale is there's no dislike on anything else. You can't dislike stuff on Twitter, you can't dislike stuff on Facebook and Instagram, you can only like. So y'all shouldn't be too upset about this. Well, Instagram is different because the average video on Instagram is maybe 59 seconds long. Um, Facebook, whatever, nobody uses Facebook like that. Twitter, we don't care about Twitter like that either. But YouTube, we come on YouTube for everything from cooking videos to hair tutorials to commentary to sketch comedy. So my thing is before I waste my time, because some, some of y'all like to trick people with these damn thumbnails, honey. Sometimes a damn thumbnail is the best part of the damn video. It's like, what the hell is really going on? Thumbnail crisp and, and you know, eye catching. Then you click on the video. It's a fucking snooze fest. It's like, damn, girl, get some energy. Get some pep in your step, okay? So for me, I don't want to get enticed by thumbnail because that's really going to be the only thing that we have to draw us to the video, right? So I click on this really cool thumbnail, but then the person's monotone. They don't know what they're talking about. And it's a shit ton of dislikes. I want to see that before I waste my time clicking on the thumbnail. As soon as I click on the video, I see the dislike. Okay, next. Because the people who don't hit dislike done told me what I needed to know about the particular video. Let me go find somebody else with a higher like ratio who's over here trying to, you know, make a project or do something that I'm looking for. That is why the dislike is, that is why the like and dislike is needed so that we don't waste our time. I don't want to sort through all these videos, honey. My time is valuable, you know, and your time is valuable. Y'all got shit to do. So YouTube, this is just silly. This, this is silly. You know, removing the dislike button. You guys are only doing it to basically protect yourselves, to protect your interests, which, which are the major brands in the mainstream, and then also to protect the political situation. Because at this point, I don't know what old man Joe is up to. No comment. But I think that's what that is. I think because the politics on YouTube, their channels are getting just, you know, disliked to death. And I think it's really starting to, you know, they're getting a blowback from like the politicians and from the mainstream. So that's why they're getting rid of this. So it's not about the people. It's not about their feelings. It's not about our mental health. It's about their bottom dollar. And that's what it boils down to. And I think it's sad. And this is why a lot of people have lost interest on this site. That's why a lot of people are moving on and going to other websites. A lot of people are creating content off of YouTube at this point because the censorship has gotten so bad. You know, even for me, that is why I was not going to post anything about Astro World on YouTube. I refused to. And most of the people who did post and who did do commentary, a lot of them are getting struck. A lot of their videos are coming down. Um, a lot of the videos are getting cleaned by Grand Hustle Entertainment, ironically enough. So it's a lot of mess going on that you really at this point can't even have an opinion about stuff without having to deal with so much nonsense. And at this point, people are tired of it. That's why people are creating their own platforms, their own websites, and kind of going old school with it now because YouTube has become a place that's become so censored. And I hate it because I love this site. This site is what helped build my brand. And I love the idea of what YouTube was and it really hurts my feelings honestly to see what YouTube has become you know the fact that we can't even have honest dialogue the fact that I can't even post this full video on YouTube I, can, I have to post half and then the other half on my podcast you know because you don't know what videos will be demonetized and if you're not speaking highly of the site automatically demonetized you know so it's just really frustrating because this was a really good site but I believe that somehow along the way they lost interest of what really mattered they lost interest interest about the you in YouTube and right now their only interest is basically bowing down to corporate interest and I think that's sad and the death of the dislike is sad and this is coming from somebody who gets dislikes within literally two minutes of an upload and even I'm like I don't care let them do what they do but leave the dislikes there because I think they're very much needed you know what I'm saying? Your ego shouldn't be that big that you can't deal with a dislike on a video. So I think it's sad. So now you guys, in other news, child, <laughs> the scamming is real. Now, I had no idea about this, but please be careful because y'all know gas is no joke right now. 
everything is going up. When I was in LA for Cardi's party and I was getting gas to go return my rental car, that shit said it was like 5.15. I was like, damn, let me let me hurry up and get back to the Midwest, okay? It was already $5 in LA. Um, in the Midwest, it's been about three something, which is extremely high. So the gas prices are going up and up. But now we got these scammers, honey, that if you're not careful, they will swap the gas pump on you. So let me go ahead and show y'all this video real quick, because I was just like, I was amazed by this. I was like, damn, when do we start doing this? <laughs> Where they do this at? But I guess it's happening all over the country. So just be aware. Check this out. We are getting new video tonight of a gas pump scheme. I want you to take a look as it is caught on camera. Imagine pumping gas only to find out it was going into someone else's tank. At ABC 10, we stand for you and we are looking out for your wallet. ABC 10's Barbara Bingley shows us the gas pump scheme just reported in Sacramento County. With gas prices soaring, some are stooping to new lows to save a buck. Watch as these two drivers pull up to a fuel station at the Arco on Watt Avenue and Blackfoot Way on Sunday. The men quickly swap the nozzles and one drives away, waiting for unsuspecting customers to pull up. Manager Bobby Joel sharing it to spread awareness. Um, you know, it was real quick, it only took a second. But you can see now, if you look at it, the, the hose comes across the pump instead of on the side itself. He says when the victims pulled up and started pumping gas, the suspect started his meter too, counting on the victims not to notice they were paying for his gas. It's the first time in his career he's seen this. Customers were also left shocked. Crazy, just mad times we're living in, you know? someone didn't even think about doing that. But this unlikely trick isn't brand new. In 2019, Roseville police arrested a man for pulling off the same scheme at least a dozen times. Police say take a moment to verify the hose is connected to the correct pump. A simple way Bobby says people can protect themselves is you start your pump, stop it real quick. If your meter stops too, then you can proceed. You'll see if this doesn't stop, you know, something's up. He says the gas station refunded the customers and reported the theft to its corporate offices and to the sheriff's office. But he wants to warn others. I know people go through hard times, but everybody is, so don't cheat your neighbor. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.